Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a hybrid AC compressor and how it works. Now the AC compressor is responsible for compressing refrigerant through the input and the output over here so that it can circulate through the system and cool the cabin on the interior. Now if you remember my video on how HVAC systems work, linked above, you'll know that the low pressure gas is going to come into the AC compressor and using either the engine power or in this case the electric motor, it's going to compress that gas to a high pressure gas and then send it out to the condenser where it's going to change phase. It'll then come back through as a liquid into the evaporator where it'll then change phase again and absorb any heat from the cabin before recirculating in the system. Now this AC compressor is from a Honda Accord hybrid and essentially has two methods of driving the AC compressor scroll wheel inside of there. The first of which is this mechanical method with a traditional clutch on this side and then the second of which is an electric motor inside of here that's driven off of the hybrid system's high voltage battery. So much like the actual hybrid system system in the car, which I've got a full teardown and link above on how that works. This has two modes of driving itself depending on the demands of the system. In some cases in idle stop mode for example, the AC compressor is going to be driven off of that electric motor alone. And then on the other hand, when the cabin is already cooled down, it's going to be driven off of the mechanical compressor alone, of course when the engine is running. And for maximum cooling it can run both mechanical and electric modes together to give you the ultimate cooling capability. Now the electric part of this AC compressor is driven off of this AC driver which is going to take the 144 volts from the hybrid battery and convert it to a three phase electric power over here which is going to be sent down to the front of the vehicle to this AC compressor through its wire over here and that's what's going to turn the electric aspect of it. Now the mechanical aspect is traditionally controlled through this clutch wire over here the same way a regular AC compressor will. Now I've got another video on how a traditional AC compressor works so make sure you check that out in the link above. Now taking a quick look around this compressor we've got our input and output ports at the top here and we've got our 144 volt input that comes in from the battery over here. At the front here of course we've got the clutch for the mechanical side and its connector. Now the back here we have that three phase motor kind of sandwiched inside of there. So here we've got a cross section view of this AC compressor. You can see the front half here is the mechanical half and it's driven off of this belt over here which has this typical clutch style like your regular AC compressor and that's going to rotate this scroll wheel inside of here. Now this is basically divided into two because the back half here has that 144 volt motor which is going to drive a smaller scroll wheel and they both work in unison with the same intake and exhaust to provide a hybrid setup to compressing the AC refrigerant. Now interestingly Honda is using hex bolts and e-torx bolts as their security fasteners to secure this stuff on so I'm going to start by removing a couple of these bolts. And with those bolts free I can remove the plug for the three phase motor and with this so the converter plug. And there's like a wave washer in here. All right, now I'm going to remove these hex bolts here. Okay, now this piece pops off here. This here's where the input and output bolts to. And you can see here, you've got the passage for where the refrigerant's going to flow. And next up, I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt from this here. And then this little curved piece here comes out. I'm going to remove this part here, which is where that plug attached to. You can see that there is a gasket here where it connects to the motor inside of there. This looks like a junction block and then you're just left with this plug here for the motor. Now I'm going to start removing all these 10 millimeter bolts going around here. This is a really long one that holds the whole assembly together. This AC compressor is leaking oil all over my cardboard studio. I'll just come in here with my wife's old sleeping shirt and I'll wipe that up. I'm just going to knock off the clutch bolt here. Now I can remove the clutch. This is just a traditional clutch, just like a regular AC compressor, where this surface here is the one that drives the spline shaft over here and ultimately drives the compressor. And this one is being turned by the engine at all times. When the clutch engages, the electromagnet inside of here is going to suck these two together so that this is now going to drive this shaft and then turn the mechanical side of this AC compressor. Now over here holding this pulley on we've got this snap ring so I'm going to use my snapping removal tool here to remove it. And I'll just take this piece of snap ring out. I got a puller on here I'm going to pull off that pulley now. And there's a bearing inside of here that it rolls on. We still got the clutch over here. Alright so I can pull this apart like this. Ooh, this is cool. Oh, there's a spiral inside. 
So the way this AC compressor works is we've got this piece over here and this is going to rotate with the input shaft of the mechanical side over here and you can see as I rotate it that it actually moves off center and it's also free to spin on its own axis. So the reason why it moves off center if I take this off here is that it's pivoting on this guy over here which as you can see is off centered. Now these little balls over here are what's going to allow this scroll wheel to ride up against the bottom surface over there. Now this scroll wheel also interfaces with the scroll on this side over here. And it's going to receive power from the mechanical side from the belt which is going to be moving it around in this direction like this. So if you take a look at how the Freon gas is going to be compressed, you can see the gas is going to enter in through these outside ports over here which corresponds to the input port on this AC compressor. The gas is then going to make its way through this scroll over here because this is moving in that jagged fashion. It's just going to force it along the spiral and then it's going to go down into this small hole over here. Now all of that is forcing the gas to be compressed and then it's just going to shoot straight out of this port which is connected over there and out to the condenser. I also see that there's a coating over here where these two touch as well as one over on this side here. And what's also interesting is you can still see those CNC marks from the bit of the tool that had to machine this out. Now I'm going to attempt to separate the electric motor side. See if we can have a closer look here. Alright, I'll just separate those two out. Alright, so on the back of this scroll wheel here, we have the permanent magnet, which is for the electric motor. Now this is a three-phase electric motor. You can see that we have a total of nine coils inside of here. And it's got a small bearing to support the electric magnet shaft over here. Now this motor operates also at 144 volts, just like the hybrid motor that's attached in between the engine and the transmission. So you can see when these coils are energized in the correct direction, it's going to turn this wheel over here. I'm just going to remove these hex bolts here. Now I can pull that off and a bunch of marbles go flying. Now just like the mechanical side, this side here with the permanent magnet, it's just a miniature version and you can see as I rotate it how it moves the scroll wheel off centered. Now just like the other side that's going to take refrigerant from the outside here and bring it down to the middle, that's going to actually send it to the front part of this port. Now the small side that's driven by the electric motor is going to similarly take AC refrigerant and bring it around to the middle but send it out to the back port over here. So they're actually two separate ports. And you've got this interesting assortments of gaskets that lie in between. And these ones even have a shim here that line it. And I can remove this small scroll wheel, just like that. You pretty much get the same mechanism, just like the one on the mechanical. Now with this AC compressor completely taken apart here, you can clearly see the difference between the mechanical side and the electric side. It's basically two separate compressors sandwiched together. Now the mechanical side and the electric side are going to work together in order to give you maximum cooling, or it's going to sometimes turn on just the mechanical side if you're just cruising along on the highway, or the electric side only if you're at idle stop and the engine's turned off and you just need to maintain a very small amount of cooling in the system. Now the ultimate control of the three-phase motor is controlled by the climate control unit which is in the dash but even that's got to send signals to this AC compressor driver. Now the control system on this setup is pretty straightforward. We have the AC compressor driver which is going to take the high voltage from the 144 volts and the hybrid battery behind the rear seat and convert it to the three phase power which is what the AC compressor is going to need. Now it's going to take its signals from the HVAC system through the CAN bus so that it knows how much to turn on or off that AC compressor. I've got more on the system behind the seats on my hybrid video teardown if you want to check that out. So now we're going to open this up so we can take a look at what's inside. This one doesn't have any security fasteners on it. I'll just pop off that cover there. So here we've got the control plug which is what's going to take the CAN bus signals. Here we've got our positive and negative DC terminals here. And of course we have the three phase AC. Taking a look at some of the components inside of here, we've got this giant inductor coil and we've got a couple of capacitors inside of here. Now at the bottom here we've got this giant heat sink here to dissipate heat. Alright, I'll remove this big piece here. This looks like a giant capacitor of some sort. It's got a positive and negative on it. And it's rated for 600 volts and 180 microfarads. And I can lift off this tray here that has this giant inductor on it. 
And here I can take off the three-phase wire. Now every three-phase motor has a UV and W phase. Here we're left with the control board, which connects directly to some important MOSFET-like components down there, which are connected directly to the heat sink. Then over here we've got two more capacitors, and of course the CAN bus microcontroller. Now the climate control computer inside the dash is going to work with the blower speed as well as the interior temperature, and send signals out to this unit over here, which is going to convert that 144 volts of DC into AC in order to tell this motor here how much and how fast to turn and if to turn on or off at all to either assist or to work by itself with the mechanical AC part of the compressor. And the advantage of having an electric system is that you can actually make it variable by varying its speed whereas a mechanical system pretty much just depends on engine RPM so it's kind of like an on off switch with the clutch. And that's an in-depth look inside a hybrid AC compressor and how it works. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.